Guys, it's your boy Kizamarsh, aka the Black Lad Traveller. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And today is the start of the Euro 2024. Come on! So it's only right that I give you my 2024 predictions. Let's get into this one. Kicking things off, Group A, where we have the host Germany, Scotland, Hungary and Switzerland. Should be a relatively easy one for Germany, to be honest. Host nation, big crowd really strong team i think it's a really good draw for them and kicking it off against scotland as well today so it should be a really good um draw for them going into the teams you've got a really two really good goalkeepers maybe three um but notably you've got Neuer and you've got the boy uh, mark andre to stegen as well um defenders you're looking really strong again notably you've got kimmich rudiger's um Jonathan Tarr as well. Midfield, really strong. Uh, Gundogan, Jamal Musiala, who I think is going to be a, have a really strong tournament. And then Florian Flirt for Wurtz, who's just had an amazing season for Leverkusen. Up top, not big names. You've got Volberg, Volker, Volkug, who has been absolutely killing it in Europe and in the league as well. The experienced Thomas Miller and... The pagan from Arsenal, Kai Havertz. Don't worry, I am a Chelsea fan, so yeah, 60 million and stuff. Um, Scotland, really good team. I've, if you haven't, check out the other videos of me going to Scotland, Edinburgh, Glasgow, to watch a few of the Hearts games. Um, the fans have been incredible from, from yesterday, um, filling the streets of Munich as well. So yeah. Can't wait, can't wait, and really hope they do well in this. I can't really see it happening, to be honest. Um, notably, you've got Matomine, Robertson. I think defensively, they don't look as strong. Um, midfield, yeah, as I said, and the boy, Laurie Shanklin, have to throw that in there, who I hope has a really good tournament as well. Uh, Hungary. Now, looking at Hungary, you've got Galatsky, who has been really strong in Europe and had a decent season as well uh, for Leipzig. Notably, you're going to have Soblastai, Soblastai, said it right. <laughs> um, and then you've got Vargas as well, who's done really well in like the Europa League um, tournaments, but you don't have as much notable names in Hungary. But one thing you're going to get from the Hungarians is a squad that absolutely fights and we'll go you've got warriors there that are just gonna gonna put everything on the line for their country which i think they're good that's why i think they're going to do well and they did um top their group as well switzerland before i was kind of writing them off but then i had a look into it and good i'm absolutely crazy for writing them off maybe it's for the love of scotland <laughs> for me writing them off but i think switzerland are really strong in this um sommer the experience um kobo as well who's done relatively well for for dortmund did really decent in the um, in the champions league as well so that's a really that's an interesting one who's going to start there um you're looking at their back line they've got fabian Cher, who's had another really good season a kanji as well and elvedi as well who's um, been at leipzig Midfield, you've got Zaka, the experience of Zaka, who's had a, another brilliant season. Um, Shakiri, who's just always there, never aging, still sharp as ever. And Zachary, who had a couple of spells in, um, well, in England, didn't work for him at Chelsea, but went over back to Monaco and, yeah, has been doing really well there. And... Going up top, you've got Mbolo, who will prove a handful for defenders and Okunfor. Um, Zeki Amduni, who, if you've watched in the Premier League for Burnley, has been a really good bright spot. So a team to watch, a very good team to watch. And it definitely did change my perspective on things as well. So we are going... To top the group, I'm going to go for Germany and I'm actually going to go second. I'm going to go for Switzerland. Then I'm going to go Hungary. And then unfortunately, my boys, it's going to be Scotland. Okay, going into group B now. This is the group. They're calling it the group of death. Spain, Croatia, Italy and Albania. Okay, the Spanish. Well, 
a really strong, good, young, strong team. It's kind of crazy how the demise of Barcelona has also seen the demise of, of Spain, um, the Spanish team, should I say. Um, really good young team. Getting into the, their, their, their starting lineup, you're probably going to look at maybe Raya starting in goal um, across the back line. Danny Carvajal, who's just, again, never aging, still sharp as ever. Gramado, who, who had a really good season. Laporte, who's now gone over to Saudi. Um, their defence, th this is the thing with Spain, I just don't think their defence are strong enough. They're, they're just not, there's no real commanding leaders in there now. Um, you're going back to your your your, your PKs, um, your Ramoses, even going back your Peels. I think now they don't really have that real solid centre back. Laporte was in there at City, but now he's gone over to Saudi. He's probably been chilling for a while. So him to get back into that um, the European aggression and yeah, I I think he's not going to be able to get back into the sharpness straight away. Um, Midfield, of course, they've got the dominant Rodri in there, Fabian Ruiz, ball playing, uh, Fermin Lopez, the young boy who has been, who's had a really good season in there. Forwards now, this is where I think they may struggle. Morata, not that much of a finisher. They do have Hosselu, who is a finisher. He will, he will pose a threat and he will put himself about. Um, Oya Zabal, who has been for real Sociedad, a bagsman, an absolute bagsman. On the wings, they've still got the young boys, Ferran Torres, who's again had a good a good season. Um, Yamal again, Nico Williams, young boy again. There's a lot of flair on the win on, on the wings. The only thing is, is who's going to be that that main striker to finish off the chances? So, yeah, that's Spain, Italy. You know, Italy are just always going to give you that experience. It's what they do. They get to these tournaments, they just know what to do. Vicario, Donnarumma at, in goal, really two good, strong goalkeepers. Donnarumma hasn't really had, I'll say he's dipped since going to PSG, he's, he's dipped massively. So it wouldn't surprise me if Vicario does get a couple of starts in there. Um, Centre-backs, again, you're looking, they've just got the Italian Bastoni, one of them. I think he's a good good player. He isn't as much of a boss as you're looking at the last Euros in Chiellini. But again, he's in and around loads of Italian um, players that are playing in Italy. He's playing with a lot of uh, Inter Milan as well players. So that could that could be pr pretty vital for him. I think that will um, for their back line. They just know how to work together as a team. Always, it's always been going forward. What can they do? This team will scrape nil nils, one nils, two nils. I can't see them getting scoring. I'd be surprised if they score three, three or more in a game. Let's put it that way. Um, attacking wide, you've got Skamaka, Chiesa, Chiesa, sorry, um, and El Sharari. Again, these are players that have had the flair, had everything, but as they're aging, they're not showing it as as much as they they should have been. Croatia now. Ho, ho. This, this team, they just know how to work together as a team. Just like the Italians. But I just think the Croatians just have that, that, them ballers in midfield with Kovacic and Luka Modric, which they can unlock games. They can change games. And I think the Italians don't really have that. Um, that's what I think the difference could be in this tournament. And then you've got Albania. Again, a few good young players, not much. Yeah, there's not really much um, players that stand out. Maybe uh, Broya for, for Chelsea, um, who's now gone to Fulham, sorry. Um, that's probably the one which people will be looking at. And I think he, for him, he would need a big tournament, um, yeah, going into this. So in my predictions, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for Italy to top the group. And I'm going to go Spain second, Croatia third, and Albania to finish fourth. Yes. Is it going to come home now? Group C, England, Serbia, Denmark, and Slovenia. This is a really interesting group again. Um, England, of course, are the favourites. So 
straight away, they're going in at first. I think the squad um, is really strong. Let's have a look at Slovenia. Jan Oblak, again, one of the best goalkeepers in Europe, consistently. There's also a big name in this, Sesko for Leipzig. Absolute baller. The thing I love watching Sesko is that he doesn't. He can take you anywhere, anywhere you want to go. He will take you there. He will take you for a run. If it's ball in the box, bang, I'm in there. He will do that. If it's a hold up, he will do that. If it's the flicks and tricks and go for a dribble, he will all that. He will also do that. So I think Sesko is a big part of this, and it's just going to be if he gets the the service. And where is he going to get the service from? That's the main. That's the main point into this. So that's Slovenia. Denmark. Denmark have a lot of players that, looking at them, there's, a, there's, there's players in there that they, they're average, but what can you do for us? Andres Christensen, again, he, at Chelsea, ran away from the big games, always had like cramps and just weren't mentally in it. But is he going to be mentally in it for his country? That's going to be a big part of them in their defence. Um, Simon Kihe. Again, I've said it wrong, probably, but yeah, also a very good baller. Anderson, who's been consistency in Prem. So yeah, looking at them, they, they do look strong. They do look strong. And then you've got the midfield boss of Hoiberg as well. Damsgaard, runners in there. Thomas Delaney, Delaney again, a boss, really good player. So yeah, they, Denmark are a team to look out for. And you've got, Rasmus Hoyland, who hasn't had a great season, but he's always in and around of it. Again, one of them players that actually not, he's not like a Sesco who will take you for a run. He's more of a player, ball will stick to him and he likes that battle. Um, and against England and these the other countries, I think they might be used to that. They might be used to that. So yeah, I think a big tournament is needed from Hoyland. So let's get in to it with Serbia now. Oh, Serbia. <sighs> Top their group. Top their group really nicely. Petrovic, who's come in incredible, but you've also got Savic as well at Torino, who's a really good, strong goalkeeper. Um, not much, not much to say about these. Lukas Jovic, uh, Valovic, I think, who deserves a move. He's been at Juve. Things have being good, but he hasn't hit the heights which people thought he would hit. So I think something a big season for him would be would be massive. A big tournament, sorry, would be massive. And then of course the England team, you've got you've got Pickford starting, then you've got Stones, Walker, you know the team already. Um midfield, you're looking at Bellingham where you're going, another big tournament, consistency, had a really good World Cup, then he goes in, gets a big move smashes it this season um so yeah i'm expecting another big thing from in this tournament and then you've just got the killer in Halle harry kane as well up top cole palmer saka again who they're talking about cole palmer and saka who's going to start i just think it's going to be a tough one solely because saka's been out for a couple of games now so i think that's going to be that's going to prove prove a bit different um i would I wouldn't start Saka. I would bring him on. Um, I just think, especially in the earlier games, I think get him, get him a feel of the ball and stuff, and then go, go get them on the on the counter early on. And then once he starts bringing into the tournament, then he's definitely the one to start in this one. So for my predictions in this one, I'm going England to top the group, Denmark to go second, Serbia, Slovenia third, and I'm going to go Serbia to go finish bottom to go into group d and this group is a joke this group is an absolute joke with netherlands france austria and poland so you're probably thinking top two we know how it's going to go we're either looking at france and netherlands um netherlands of course they've got virgil van dyke they've got your the lit You've got Dumfries, you've got uh, Mickey van der Ven, you've got Frimpong, you've got players that have had really good seasons. And of course, how can I forget Nathan Ake again? 
their defence is so solid. Then you look at their midfield. Xavi Simmons, Frankie de Jong, um, Wijnaldum. I think their midfield is not going to be strong. So what you could expect from them is definitely playing uh, five at the back with the two wingers in Frimpong um, and even though they play on the same right, the same side, maybe Dumfries will even be in there. That is, this defence is going to be very crucial to them. The defence is massive. And then up top, you're looking at um, Steven Bergwijn. Brian Broby is a young player. Bring him on at the 70th minute. Teams are not going to want, defenders are not going to like it. You've just been getting run down on the wings. And now you've got Broby, who, young, black, strong guy, I can add that in there, um, just running at you. This is going to be, this is a good one. Marlon Pace up there. Um, the Pie, who's an absolute bagsman. And again, Cody Gapo. This team is a dark, I wouldn't call them a dark horse, but yeah, I, I can see them again. Soaking up the pressure, soaking up the pressure. Then just hitting teams on the counter. And then let's go to France. Ballers. Like across, across it, you've got uh, Maignan, you've got Canati, Tio Hernandez, Saliba, um, Umpa Meccano, Verlan Mendy. Like you've just got a solid, uh, Jonathan Klaus as well for Marseille. Really good player, really good player. Chelsea were, were in for him, didn't sign him, um, got Gusto instead. But yeah, really good young player as well. Midfield, Kamavinga, Chukameni, they know how to play with each other. Zaire Emery as well for PSG is an absolute baller, an absolute baller. So it's going to be really fascinating to see him in this tournament. Um, and up front, you know, the boy Kylian Mbappe, um, yeah, speaks volumes. And then you've got Olivier, Olivier Giroud, who is just cold. Um, and then you've just got the other wingers as well. Again, I think the midfield is really strong in this. Um, and then you've just got a, a cheat code in Mbappe. So this, them two teams, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see them. Poland, um, obviously, you've got the big man, uh, Robert Lewandowski up top, who, again, we haven't really seen him absolutely kill tournaments. So it'll be good to see how he actually um, fears in this one. I'm probably not expecting much of him, to be honest. Um, yeah, across the back, then you've got uh, Chesney, Bedenak, and then a few other players playing around. Um in the European leagues as well. Okay, let's get into Austria now. Again, I think it's just these two teams with Poland v Austria. It, I think it's just a game for them. Let's just beat you, get into third, and then let's see who we get in the next round. Um, Marko Nautovic, Ballers, um, Andreas Wyman, hasn't been, not with a club, called up. Um, yeah, there's not really much that I want to say. Lima who is a good player. Um, he's one of them players that he, he plays for Munich. Plays. He does play, start a lot of games. He doesn't show... Yeah, he's just one of them players that fit in well. And then obviously you've got Marcel Sabitzer, who's had a really good season um, at Dortmund as well. So yeah, that's Austria. My prediction for this one, I'm going France to top the group. Netherlands second. Um, Austria, Poland. I'm going to go Poland uh, and then Austria. To be fair, I actually think Netherlands could top that group. So I'm going to change that and go Netherlands to top the group, France to go second. I think when they play each other, France are going to struggle to break them down. I don't see it being an easy ride in this group. So we're in group E. <laughs> this is, yeah, it's a good, it's a good group. Again, Belgium, they've never really smashed it at tournaments, going back to um, the World Cup when he finished third, um, had a really good World Cup since then. It's not really been much shown. Um, again, they've gone from Courtois has not been picked, of course, injury, um, which was quite weird, actually, because, of course, he um, played in the start of the Champions League final as well. But yeah, another injury. So not the one there. Mid, uh, going up to the back. Jan Vertong is still playing, so that's showing you how age how aged it is. Castagna will give you that running up and down. Um and Witzel dropped into to the back line as well. Um yeah, this is gonna be quite I've said that it's gonna be a big team to drop out. 
of this tournament at the group stages. And it wouldn't surprise me if it is going to be Belgium. I think Trossard's going to have a really good tournament. Um, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if it is Belgium in a relatively, probably a group that's favouring them, to be honest. Um, yeah, but let's have a look at Slovakia. We are looking at Dubravka at the back. Um, Skriniar, as I said, the young boss. Uh, Kuka, who played at Watford, moved to Sloven, Bratislava, watched him play last year. Really good midfield boss. Um, loves the tackle. So put him on to get booked for sure a couple of times. Um, yeah, not much to say about them. Romania, who... It wouldn't surprise me. It really wouldn't surprise me if these lot finished second in the group. They don't really have that much notable names. Um, Jazus, um, Jagusin, who yeah signed to Tottenham, um, hasn't really done bits, but is still a young player. But they did finish top of their group. So that shows to me that they now have to play as a team and then they now have to get the job done. And everyone is pretty much playing in Romania as well. So... That could help with that could help with things as well. So I'm gonna go. Oh, I said I said all of that. Oh, can't forget the boy Ukraine. Again, notably, you've got Madrid, um, Mikalenko as well. Um, Dobrovsk, if, if that's how you're saying, Yarmolenko as well. These are a lot of them. Are, yeah, really good players, and of course you've got Zinchenko as well. Good players in good positions. They know how to play to, with each other and they know how to get the job done. Lumen as well, who's had an, a really good season as well, who came in uh, for Real Madrid and was instrumental for them even going through, um, getting to as far in the Champions League. So this, I'm going to go for, I think Belgium probably will, will get in actually. I'm going to go Belgium... Mm, Ukraine, Romania, Slovakia. Get into Group F, Portugal, Czech Republic, Turkey and Georgia. Well, my favourites in this group and probably out throughout the tournament is going to be Portugal, to be honest. Um, I just think they're, they're class across goalkeeping options, strong defence, midfield and forward options. Um, notably, you're going Ruben Diaz, um, Pepe, Joao Cancelo, midfield, you've got Bruno Fernandes, who I think is going to have a great tournament. Bernardo Silva, Polinia, Nunes, um, Vettina, who again, if he does get a lot of game time, he's going to be an exciting player. I've been watching him a while for um, PSG. And yeah, he just looks like an absolute baller. Um, and then, of course, the forward, Joao Felix, Rafael Le Leal, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, Pedro Neto, Jota, a really exciting team Portugal are. Uh, Czech Republic, notably, you've got Suchek, Kufal, um, and then, of course, Patrick Schick, who's just, a, he loves a European tournament. He loves an international tournament, shows it on the big stage as well. Can't wait to see them. Turkey as well, a lot of them playing it out in the Turkish league, which is always good, which shows um, that will be the togetherness. Like, yeah, we... We know how it works. We we know how each other play. We're watching each other constantly. So yeah, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be key, I think, to these tournaments. And it usually is key to international football as well. Um I was talking about the demise of um of Spain, how Barcelona used to have that togetherness. They always had three, four really out and out players playing for them, um, and actually killing it at the top level as well. So yeah, Turkey Hakan uh, Kalahoglu, really baller. Any dead ball situation, he's going to be the guy to, to be on there. And the young boy, Ardagula, for Real Madrid, who's an absolute young prospect as well. Georgia, and fair play to Georgia. I can't see them doing really well in this group or in the tournament, but for them to just even be here is an absolute massive, massive achievement as well. So, Fair play to, to Georgia, and, and I hope they, they do make a good account of themselves as well. Um, notably, they've got the boy Kivacha, Kivelacelia, Bola for Napoli. Had an absolute great season, not last season, but the season before. Um, yeah, that's a notable name in this. A lot of them playing in Georgia as well and going across different countries. Um, so for this one, I'm going for Portugal to top the group, Turkey second. Czech Republic 
third and Georgia fourth. Okay, now on to the third place ranking teams in terms of who's going to put who's going to be the best out of their groups. Okay, I'm going to top it with Croatia because I think Croatia are going to get a win um, over Albania. Then we're going to look at where the other wins are going to come from. So this could be. I'm going to go for, because of the other teams around it, um, and I think Romania could have a win and a draw potentially in there. So I'm going to go for that. Um, then I'm going to look at Slovenia, probably third in there. I'm still thinking if it's going to be third, it could even be um, Serbia. But let's put Slovenia in there. Um Okay, who else have we got? We're left with Croatia. And that's a hard thing. Um, sorry, we're not left with Croatia. Just done Croatia. Um, yeah, that's the hard thing you're looking at. Czech Republic, again, I think they're going to get a win. So Czech Republic go fourth in this. Um, and lastly, Poland v Austria could be a draw. Could Who knows? Um, I'll go P Poland in that. So yes, that's done. Now on to the round of 16 where we have Germany versus Denmark in match 37, which I think Germany will be winners in that. Match 38 with Spain versus Switzerland. I'm going for the Spanish. And Italy versus Czech Republic in match 39. And I'm going for the Italians. Match 40, England versus Romania. This just makes so much sense because you could just imagine England when England versus Romania. The absolute carnage is that, that's going to happen. So, yeah, England versus Romania. England to win. Um, match 41, Portugal versus Croatia. What a game this is. And I'm going to go for Portugal win. Match 42, France versus Ukraine. French to win that. Match 43, Belgium versus Slovenia. I'm oh, cool. That is a tough one. I'm going to go Belgium. And match 44, Netherlands versus Turkey. And I'm going to go for Netherlands. So it gets us to the quarter final stage now where things are heating up. And I love this. Set. I love this. I love it. I, I love it. Match 45 in the quarter final of the Euro 2024, Germany versus Italy. And I'm going for the host nations again. Boom. Match 46, Portugal versus France. This is an absolute baller of a game. And I'm going to go for the... Ooh, I said I favoured I favored Portugal. I'm going to go for Portugal, you know. I'm going to go Portugal. Um, Belgium versus Netherlands. I don't even think they should have made it this far, Belgium. But yeah, going to go for Netherlands. England versus Spain. All the people in Magaluf, Mallorca, uh, Lanzarote, what, Benidorm, it's all going to be kicking off on the strip because England are going to do them. Car. Semi-final of the Euros now. Germany versus Portugal. See this one here. I'm going to go for a Germany win. I think Portugal have done well in the tournament so far, but the host might just have this. And Netherlands versus England. I'm going England. And that brings me on to the final of Euro 2024 in Munich. The Allianz Arena. What? Germany versus England. This is mental. I've been there before. We've done it. England, we've done it against the Germans in, in the Allianz Arena. Chelsea, we done it all. We done that in their own backyard. And I'm saying, it's going to happen again. I think it's going to happen again. England, to beat the Germans at the Allianz Arena. Euro 2024. You've heard it here first. I've been Kizza Marsh, a.k.a. the Black Lad Traveller. Put... Don't put your mortgage on it. Maybe chuck a fiver on it. But remember where you saw it. Comment below if you thought I've got it spot on. If you if I've got it nailed on and you've you've seen the vision, yeah, man. Put that in the comment as well. But yeah, man, appreciate for watching. I'll be giving well, pretty much. Let me give you a 
what's going to be happening. So I haven't got any plans yet to go to Germany, but I will make it happen. Guys, come on, man. You need the vlogs. You Come on. You need, bro, I should be, I'm going to be, the problem is I go to Germany, I vlog it. The hangover is going to be a madness. I'm going to be drinking with the different fans and it's going to be a madness. So I don't know when the video is going to come out. And that's the problem. But I'm going to make it happen. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe because now nah, this is the first time I'm doing it. There's going to be loads of videos coming out now where I go through the stories, the madness that's happened in loads of the different places that I've been to, whether it was getting drugged in. Singapore, one of the safest countries, or getting racial abuse in a few different stadiums across Europe. The stories are going to be coming. Don't get to like, share and subscribe. Peace out. Thank you for watching this. Let's go.